When I made that first little dinky episode in my first little dinky apartment back in 2015 that I would be here today in 2021 making the 100th one. So first, please let me just say a massive, 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 massive thank you to you and all the support over the years, whether you've been here since the beginning or you just discovered me yesterday. Like, I owe my everything to you. Like, it's literally been a life-changing journey and I am definitely not stopping anytime soon. So I thought for the 100th episode I would do something that kind of represents all that. I have got one of these guys. If you're not familiar this is an official Jurassic World Raptor mask. They came out in about mid 2018 I think it was. It was to tie in with the Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom movie and they were very quickly discovered to be more than just a kid's toy. They're actually super duper comfy to wear and they have a moving jaw that works really well. I believe it was TikTok where it first started, but people started to actually paint them and customize them and fur them into their own characters, essentially creating really affordable fursuits. Like these masks only cost 13 USD. So yeah, it was a really great entry point into the fursuit making world. Well, I mean, unless you don't live in America like me, like, uh, it was a lot more expensive to import than I would like. And like, I probably could have found a better deal or found a friend who could find one and send it to me, but I, I just really wanted it in time for the video. Speaking of which, what am I going to do with it? Well, I thought that I might try and fur it like a resin base and try and turn it into a fluff dragon. like. I don't know if it's even going to be possible and like I don't know if anyone else has tried it either but after making Lumpy I feel like I have the confidence to give it a solid tackle so why not? I feel like it's a good way to celebrate just how far the fandom has progressed and changed over the years and how much I've progressed and changed over the years as well. But first of course we need some fur so I popped down to my local spotlight once the whole lockdown thing was ended and tried to see what I could find. Spotlight has a lot of what we call craft fur, where it is fur, but it's not the greatest quality ever. I wanted to use some actual nice furs. But the nice furs that Spotlight stocks is always quite limited, so I was able to find this really nice red stripy fur, and a little bit of this black. And here at home, I already have a lot of grey fur, the same fur that you saw used on Lumpy. So I created a whole bunch of potential designs using this palette. I pitched them to my patrons and together they all voted and this was the winning design. I feel like it was actually a really good choice. It's a good middle ground because like it's definitely not super duper easy but it's not going to be impossible either. Like I feel like this is within the scope of my ability and it kind of looks like a Digimon too so bonus points there. <laughs> so yeah I guess with that we better get started. I actually bought a proper mannequin head this time. Look at that. <laughs> Though it doesn't really have a chin or anything so I'm gonna have to like build something like that out of foam first so it's like a realistic head shape but um yeah I shall see you out of suit so first things first was to make sure that mannequin head actually was the same sort of size as mine so I measured it compared to my own marked out where the chin and my eyes were and then later I made a little like foam chin for it I also have this foam that I picked up from Spotlight. This is what I plan to make the ears out of and it probably wasn't going to be the best choice because it is quite thin and it tears really easy but I reckon it will do the job. It also occurred to me that I didn't have a balaclava or anything else to do the base on so I dug out my old Under Armour shirts and uh, veterans of the channel will recognize this from my very first suit up in Pakari video. Sadly it doesn't fit me anymore but uh, yeah so I thought I could make my balaclava out of that shirt. One other thing that I needed to work out was how I was going to secure the mask. Like I explained it pretty well at the moment. Yeah, when you have one of these raptor masks and you go to open up the jaw without anything to secure the top, it just... <laughs> like, actually, I put it on and see. Um, 
So it's just bleh. <laughs> that's that's not used. Now now it's not even in my jaw. So you get one mouth movement, bleh, and then that that's it. Without it being really exaggerated. <laughs> but you want it to stay here, so then it's nice and sensitive. Like it's actually a really good moving jaw. Like when when this first arrived in the mail, I was actually really impressed. It's it's super solid. Yeah, so originally my plan was to make some kind of strap out of foam or something, but I thought, well, what if I just sew the strap that's already on the mask to my balaclava, quote unquote, uh, to see if that would do the job. So I finished horrifically sewing my <laughs> Under Armour shirt into a balaclava, glued the mask on, sewed the strap to it, and it, it did the job. So I made a paper template for the ear shape that I wanted, glued the foam together, stuck them on, and called it a day. Yeah. All right, we are back for day two. Today, uh, well, I'm pretty much gonna try and fill in the bottom of this a bit so it like hides the, the, the chin and builds it up so it's a bit more of a dragon than a raptor. Um, don't know if I'll build up the sides. I guess we'll see. And once all the foam work is done, we'll get onto taping. So after I finished putting the foam on the chin, I got onto reinforcing the ears because Keeper came in and mentioned that while they are cute and floppy, once fur gets on them, they're gonna get quite s saggy. <laughs> so they needed a little bit more structure to them. And after that, I was actually much happier with that more reinforced shape than I was what I had originally. And then we get stuck into taping. Uh-huh, uh-huh, get it. Stuck into taping. Hello. Please laugh, please. Uh, but yeah, so I did the same taping method as I did with Lumpy, except this time I made sure to only do one half of the head. Because that was one of my biggest mistakes with Lumpy, is that because it's symmetrical on both sides, I didn't have to tape and pattern both sides. You could just do one. So <laughs> I only did the one side this time. And like, while the ears aren't exactly symmetrical, I figured it'd be, it'd be good enough. <laughs> so once I finished taping up one half, I got straight on to drawing on my pattern. So drawing out all the markings, drawing out where I wanted to do some extra cuts in the tape, and also marking out the direction I wanted the fur to go. And I think that there is a pattern, kind of. <laughs> just like Lumpy will cut, it's kind of just figure it out as we go along. And I'm pretty sure I got the line down the middle. Looks like it. We shall see. Cutting, cutting, cutting. And I also added some extra marks to help me put it back together. And I took lots of video of the head before I had cut it in case I forgot where anything went. Cut. The next step was to trace out each part of the pattern and cut them out on the fur. And I actually did the really smart thing this time of writing out what each piece was on the backs of them. Like that was literally the best decision that I made in this entire build. Like I would have been so lost had I not done that. And you'll see here that uh, the background suddenly changes and there's a very good uh, reason for that. If you don't like spiders, please skip to the timestamp on screen right now. You have been warned. We moved my couch to do some cleaning and yes, that very same couch that I have been sitting on for many, many, many hours and behind it, was this friend. Hi, hello. That's a red back spider. That's a nope. That is a big nope from me, friend. So <laughs> um, after promptly relocating said spider, we uh, moved my entire operation into a completely different room, which you will see for the remainder of this project. Hello. Here we are with all the pieces. Every little piece that has been cut out. And this is all for just one head. Uh, and I'm gonna hand sew everything because I don't like sewing machines at all. I don't think ours would even handle fur. It's a pretty cheapy sewing machine. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the sewing is probably what took the longest out of all of this. Like it was easily three solid days worth of work and I ended up doing the majority of it off camera because well, it's not that entertaining to watch but also it was really uncomfortable to have to sit there at that table for that long. So I sort of just like, position myself on the couch and just sew all day while watching movies. Annoyingly, from this point onwards, my webcam footage just went a bit funny and it's quite stuttery and jumpy and it's to the webcam where I did a lot of my, you know, to the camera talking my feelings kind of footage. So I did lose a lot of that, which is just great. I have used what was still usable, but yeah, apologies for some of the footage being a wee bit jumpy. 
Eventually, I had each half of the face done, which I then sewn together and also finished sewing up each ear. I did a little test fit and I was actually really happy with how it was going. Give me a unicorn. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> that was a lot of sewing. I've never sewed so much in my life. Hmm. But it is turning out quite nice. My pattern, like, actually worked. I don't even know who I am anymore. Like, it's actually fitting quite snugly. It's over the mouth, and like, when you open the mouth, he still he still do a chomp. So like, I think, so when the mouth's closed, it's probably still gonna bunch up at the side here. But if I leave it, like, the fur long, you don't really see it, so... Um, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, because I don't know how it's gonna look until it's, like, glued on. Which is the next stage, and the stage I've been dreading from this entire adventure. Uh, and also the ears are currently separate because the ears are quite the pain to get on and I don't know an efficient way to glue them on while they're still attached to the head so I've left them. And the plan is to glue them on, shave them down, and then ladder stitch it to the rest of the head so it's like an invisible stitch, they're really cool. Do I glue the head first? Like the face first? Or the ears first? I mean, I guess ears? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. This is still my second attempt and my first, like, actual trying effort attempt and no time limit attempt. I mean, I got a little bit of a time limit. It's currently Friday. I was hoping to be editing by today. Actually, I was hoping to be editing by yesterday. But even when, even when I plan super far in advance and give myself lots of extra days, it's still not enough time. Coffee, what is your wisdom? And we still haven't talked about the eyes. They're still gonna make eyeballs. <laughs> Evidently, I settled on gluing the ears first. So I glued the ears inside out and then would glue the top of the ear to the top of the foam and then slowly turn it back in the right way and glue it on the way down. I borrowed Kiba's dog grooming equipment once again and got those shaved down. Once that was done, I put the face back on and ladder stitched them all together. The sewing portion of this entire thing was finally finished. I don't know, maybe I'd just been like subconsciously stalling because I didn't want to get to the gluing part. <laughs> but I did it little by little, glued where I thought it should be secure, glued all around the edges of the mouth so the fur would stay like just before the teeth. And once I was happy with it, I started shaving down the face. I did an okay job, but then Kiba came and offered to like give it a little bit of a clean up for me. So since this wasn't a challenge, I accepted her offer and she made it all nice and smooth for me. And I was really, really happy with how the shave had turned out because I love how it's sort of darker when you shave it. So you sort of get this nice radiance of the dark gray to a lighter gray as the fur gets longer. The final step to tie it all together was to do the eyes, which I was also terrified of doing because I'd had no experience in. I saw some buckram and a sheet of plastic, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it. So I sketched out the sort of shape that I wanted onto the plastic and cut out the bit that I wanted to be black. I also needed my buckram to be black for the iris, so I thought the best way to go about this would be to spray paint them. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but I just went for it, left them overnight to dry, and the result was actually really good. Like, I thought it might chip or it might come off. It can scratch off a little bit on the plastic, but it honestly wasn't too bad. I played with iris shapes for ages, but once I found something I was happy with, I cut them out and glued them onto the buckram. And dreaded gluing them onto the head. But I got them on. It was actually kind of symmetrical and it was done. Like, you know how in Jurassic World you've got the raptor called Blue, so we got Red Blue, and like Red is just a nice, cute, quick name, and she's got Red on her, so Red. 
And obviously I don't have matching paws, but uh, maybe I can color correct them for a hot second. There you go. That, that's, that's what it would look like. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you can for a, a raptor mask. <laughs> well, she's not perfect. There are definitely a lot of things that came out better than I thought they would. Like the eyes actually line up with the eyes on the raptor mask really well. Like the vision is actually quite nice. <laughs> and the mouth still moves. I thought it was gonna be stuck open. Like it's not super sensitive, but I still have pretty concise control. I do have these little like chubby cheeks at the side where it bunches up where it's closed, but it doesn't look too bad. Like my plan was pretty much just like cut that bit out and maybe put some black fabric there if I didn't like how it looked, but I think it's cute. Kind of gives her a little, a little smile. The ears, I think I definitely could have done better. They're definitely not what I had in mind. Like they're not bad, but they could be lower and more like out. Cause whenever I look at them from the front, all I see is like pigtails. <laughs> now naturally there's a massive blind spot in the middle. Cause like, while I know I'm looking directly at you right now, I can't see the camera. <laughs> and I do wish that the mohawk sticked up a bit. Like it's not quite as pronounced as I would have liked. Next time I'll have to get like two pieces of the fabric and stick them like together upright instead of flat. I thought maybe the red fur would be long enough on its own to really stick out, but yeah. If you like <laughs> stick it out manually, it's not too bad. I, I guess I could say I'm a fursuit maker now. <laughs> I'm not too sure. I mean, I can at least work with bases. That's a start, which honestly I'm fine with. So I think the base part is the bit that I enjoy the least. Cause while the sewing took me like three days worth, it's kind of cathartic because I can just sit on the couch, chuck on a movie, and just sew all night. When I'm an old lady, I'm definitely going to be a sewing old lady. Always going to sew again, always sewing something. <laughs> also, remember how I paid like a hundred bucks for this mask? Well, yesterday I just saw that Australian targets have started getting them in for like, you know, the proper, not hundred dollar price. So, <laughs> yeah, that was very silly of me. Don't do what I did. <laughs> Go see if you can find one in a target somewhere. But let's get back to the roof. There we are. I think my favorite part about this has to be those side stripes. Like the little uh, markings around the eye didn't come out as clearly as I liked, but I, I really like how those cheek stripes came out. Same with like the muzzle ring, because like I patterned that muzzle ring while the mouth was open, so I wasn't sure if it would actually like connect between the top and bottom jaw. But it did! Ah! So given everything in like, you know, the, the makeshift balaclava and all that jazz that it fits. It's a lot better than I expected, definitely. Welcome to the world, Red. I hope you enjoy your stay. Shout out to any raptor mask brethren in the comments. And if you give furry a raptor mask a go after seeing this video, please tag me in the finished results. I really want to see how other people do with this. And I think that's about everything. So thank you so much for joining me on this 100th bottle episode special. I hope you enjoyed it. This has been a very long journey and we are not stopping here. And I shall see you next time, either here on YouTube or maybe even on Twitch. Check out my streams at twitch.tv slash Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye! This month's anniversary shoutouts go to Hayu and Renko, who have been here for four heckin' years. Thank you guys so much. Then we've also got Stormy Fulf, who has been here for three years. Ah, thank you so much, dude. Then for two years, we've got Kat and Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. And one year, we've got Yemanian Sav, Kojiro TP, Big Vixie, and Peppermint Leo. Thank you all so much for your support.